So, there's a lot going on about the Edmonton Oilers, and there are so many different ideas that people have been tossing out there as to whether or not they would be good fits in Edmonton, would be good trade candidates for the Oilers, etc. So, in this video, I wanted to take some time to acknowledge, just straight up acknowledge, what's going on in Edmonton and kind of collide everything that we've seen so far. Guys talking on platforms like the Edmonton Journal, on The Athletic, etc., talking about different players who could be Edmonton Oilers trade targets. So, today we're starting off with an article here on the Edmonton Journal. It talks about this. Should the Oilers stick with Oscar Clefbaum and Darnell Nurse over an expensive Oliver Ekman Larson? So, this article was posted about a week ago, a week ago, by David, I can't believe I just did that, by David Staples, and it kind of goes over the question that is asked right there in the title. We already spoke about some of the Edmonton Oilers D-men. We made a video a few weeks ago talking about Clefbaum, Nurse, Larson, as well as the other one, Ethan Bear, and whether or not two of four of these guys will get traded to make room for Broberg and Bouchard. Certainly an interesting question for sure. Check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. But this article goes over the idea of Oliver Ekman Larson, a guy who we also talked about in a separate video too, talking about the Arizona Coyotes and whether or not it's time for them to rebuild. The entire reason Ekman Larson enters this conversation is because the Coyotes don't have any draft picks. I'm pretty sure you saw the overall forfeiting that they had of their draft picks after the whole draft illegal testing kind of thing that they were doing on the prospects, but because they don't have any picks, then okay, maybe it would be time to trade off some of your older assets, try to get some picks back and build towards the future, because in a flat cap world with the circumstances the way they are in Arizona with Taylor Hall probably leaving and all these other guys, Phil Kessel not being that good anymore, it may be time to start rebuilding. So, that's the entire perspective we talked about with the Arizona Coyotes in our previous Coyotes video, but in this Edmonton Journal article, the pitch is made as to whether or not Ekman Larson would be a good catch for Edmonton. There are a whole bunch of numbers going after things like shorthanded time on ice per game, overtime ice per game, even strength time, and then the whole philosophical debate as to whether or not Ekman Larson is a top 15 D-man in the league comes up, and whether or not that actually would be beneficial for the Edmonton Oilers. But the Oilers are indeed a team that, hey, if they wanted themselves a left-handed defenseman who at a time was getting 50, 40 points in a year consistently, but who dipped off to 30 this previous season, then honestly, I'd be cool if Ken Holland took a stab and tried to capitalize on what is an unfortunate situation in Arizona for his own hockey team here. Now, the rest of the article towards the end, it does mention a few other names that may be in this discussion too, that the Edmonton Oilers should go over, Ekblad from the Panthers, other guys like Tyson Berry, and then it ultimately goes over into the ending point as to whether or not Clefbaum and Nurse should be just kept instead. But let's move over onto a few other outlets talking about a few other players. Let's go over onto this athletic article written by Jonathan Willis on September 9th. The title is this, There are no good shortcuts for the Oilers with Jesse Pugliarvi. To go over this article, we're going over to Spectres Hockey from September 14th, 2020, because we don't want to screenshot athletic material and put it on here because it's paid for content. I'll leave a link in the description to the articles we discuss in this video, so check those out if you want to read a little bit further. But the athletic article we're referencing over here goes over... Alan Mitchell's opinion, who suggests that Boston Bruins winger Jake DeBrusque would be an attractive option for the Connor McDavid line. DeBrusque is an RFA and could cost around $5 million annually to sign. The Bruins' asking price could be prospects and draft picks, though Mitchell suggests the Oilers' first-round pick might come into play. Mitchell's colleague Jonathan Willis believes the Oilers won't get fair value in any trade involving Jesse Pogliarvi, while some observers suggest swapping the winger for another underachieving younger player. That's something we talked about previously in the Jesse Pogliarvi Henrik Borgstrom video, where the Florida Panthers' top Finnish prospect was discussed as well. Check that out if you haven't seen it. It will be probably somewhere in the related videos. 
But let's end off on that thought. The main idea here is Jake DeBrusque. That's an interesting name that I honestly hadn't really considered being in any of these player movement talks. Spectre's note kind of goes over this idea over here. He says this, If the Boston Bruins don't re-sign Tory Krug, they'll have the cap room to re-sign DeBrusque. Though, that could go off the rails if the winger seeks more than they're willing to pay. I think they intend to re-sign DeBrusque and remain patient with him since he's only 23 and was on pace to exceed 20 goals for the second straight year and 40 points for the third straight year before the pandemic prematurely ended the season. So, depending on what exactly the Boston Bruins do with Tory Krug, there could be a potential market for a guy like Jake DeBrusque as well. A guy drafted out of the 2015 NHL entry draft, a guy who's defined by a few characteristics, some pretty good offensive stats and capabilities, the guy can shoot, the guy can play two-way, the guy can do a lot of things in the game of hockey, actually. He's one of the better players in terms of guys that were drafted by the Bruins in this time frame, and believe me, there aren't really too many of those, unfortunately speaking. But Jake DeBrusque indeed was a guy who got 43 points in 2018, 42 in 2019, and 35 in 65 games in 2020. He had 27 goals, actually, one season ago. Playing on a Boston Bruins team that had their best guys not playing with DeBrusque, because we know that Marshawn, Bergeron, Pasternak, those guys play on their own line. So if a guy like this is indeed available on the trade market, then hey... Imagine this guy playing with Connor McDavid. I think that's the standard argument that everybody talks about with any kind of forward. Oh, imagine him playing with McDavid. But a DeBrusque kind of guy could be that player who really absolutely just explodes from either playing with a McDavid or a Dreisaitl. No disrespect to a David Krejci or any other second-line center the Bruins have. But when you go from that where you're playing behind Patrice Bergeron's line all the way on to one of the top two, top three players in the world on some nights in Edmonton? Ooh, man, that does indeed sound amazing. Obviously, though, it is dependent on what happens with Tori Krug, but Jake DeBrusque to Edmonton certainly would be a very interesting idea, too. And then finally, because we have a little bit more time here in this video footage of the Oilers gameplay in the background, let's talk a little bit about Matt Murray. Yeah, I know, we're kind of late on this one, but... Believe me, I certainly have been seeing this one pop up too. The Oilers and the Penguins have talked about Matt Murray, I'm told, but as far as I can tell, the asking price is a little bit too rich for Ken Holland at this point. A first round pick, maybe? I think Edmonton will be patient in its goalie search. And the Oilers have not ruled out bringing back Mike Smith either. This was a tweet by Pierre Lebrun back on September 10th. That was a few days ago. That was a week ago, actually. But the Matt Murray Penguins first round pick thing certainly was a big idea when it was dropped. Whether or not Matt Murray would be the guy that the Oilers decide as the next one in net in Oil Town. Because we know that they have been needing a little bit of support in that department. And they have been linked to all the rumors of all the other goaltenders who who are either free agents or on the trade block as well. Braden Holtby, Jacob Markstrom, Robin Lehner, there's been discussions of all of these guys and whether or not they would be suitable playing behind Connor McDavid. But the Matt Murray story is a different one because we know that Pittsburgh kind of wants to get rid of him because Jari is their guy now. Yippee, he is the guy they want to roll with. So Matt Murray, sorry, buddy, you're on your way out. At least that's what all the rhetoric that we have seen in the media would suggest. But a first-round pick, man? For Murray? You gotta be kidding me, man. That first-round pick would literally be a pick earlier than the pick they gave to Toronto. Edmonton currently has the 14th overall pick. Pittsburgh had the 15th before they gave it to Toronto in the Kasperi Kapanen trade. So essentially, if you're trading Murray for a first, the same area of a first that you ended up giving away in the Kapanen trade, what you're essentially doing here is swapping out Kapanen for Murray and you're rising one spot in the draft. So, honestly, it's kind of weird. I don't know if I would trade Kapanen for Murray, but if you lay it out in the way that we just laid it out, that's kind of what the Penguins kind of insinuated they wanted to do because if you're asking for a first-round pick in return for Matt Murray, then I don't know if... Edmonton is going to be willing to give that up, but indeed Murray has been discussed, so that's kind of why we're including it here in this video. We've already spoken at length about the Alberta goaltending situation, but 
We're kind of towards the end of the gameplay here, so talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. Jake DeBrusque, Oliver ekman Larson, Matt Murray, would they be Oilers? Would they be good Oilers? And if you're an Oilers fan, would you trade for them? Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.